Good morning, everybody. It's great to see a few people have decided to come and, and hopefully learn a little bit from us. Um, I can tell you one thing that is amazing about this webinar. Everything you're going to learn today is because we have done all the errors. So uh, we're not trying to be uh, Mr. Uh, the Misters of Wise Guys uh, in everything we do, but uh, we are trying to share some of our uh, knowledge and uh, learnings from uh, almost 10 years doing films. And uh, in a, just in a few moments, uh, Chica will be the first presenter. He is uh, uh, our head of production, so uh, it's always interesting. And uh, a little bit later, and just after Chica, we will see uh, and have a visit by Ed Cornelison from uh, the Netherlands, who is using films in his uh, communication, his company. So uh, I'm very excited about this. And I will also say that we have a quite a tight program to get through everything. So uh, I hope things will go uh, more or less as planned. Um, one thing I just want to say, um, please uh, ask questions in the chat. Uh, I am reading it while we are trying to execute this webinar. Uh, and uh, I hope it will be great. So. Um, Let's just give a few more minutes. Uh, I can tell a little bit about uh, what we are up to right now. Uh, just uh, as a, I would say, maybe a little bit of commercial for us uh, until we, uh, until we uh, are ready to get started for real. Uh, the uh, one of the things that we're very excited about these days is that we are publishing our first magazine here at the end of August. Uh, unfortunately, it's only for Californians so far. Uh, it, uh, we have developed an idea where we basically say uh, film is the basis for an uh, independent journalist to write a story. Uh, in this case, we have delivered seven uh, unedited films to Nissan Cleary in the UK. And he has started writing articles about what we have seen and experienced, but he has not been there. So the stories are totally different from ours and uh, totally uh, kind of refocus everything uh, turned into a very beautiful printed magazine uh, that will be distributed to all the printers in california so this is uh, something new for inkish and something that we are very excited about and of course when you uh, make films and send out uh, information to people in california of course we need to print it in california uh, the next project we are planning is uh, or not planning so far but we're thinking of right now is uh, uh, in the in the in the french speaking uh, area so it will be a french magazine with french stories and sent out to a number of french uh, printing companies so let's see that is uh, for us quite exciting and uh, uh, fortunately, as usual, we are filming a lot of films uh, from all over the world. Uh, we have just almost finished the editing of uh, our films from uh, Latin America. So uh, some of you here on the on the uh, in this webinar can uh, look forward to that because uh, that is your products that have been featured. Um, and um, in next week, uh, Chick and I we go to. Uh, to Prague to see a huge packaging company that have invested in a Hikon uh, laser cutter. And uh, in just a few weeks more, we go to the US for a, a little bit longer trip to film a lot of things. And um, so that is uh, pretty much what our da daily life is all about these days here. So uh, it's about time. As I said, we have a pretty uh, tight schedule here. So uh, Chica, good morning and welcome to you. Yeah, uh, good morning to all of you. Hope it's not too late for someone. I see someone from the US and stuff like that. So, yeah, some from Japan as well. So, I yeah, think it is exactly. uh, it is uh, quite interesting. So, Chike, where are you right now? I am currently in Slovenia. So, it's the same time zone as you. So, it is 10 past 10. So, we're, we're still mm. good. Mm, okay. Chike, um, how did you get into the industry actually? I mean, how oh. did you get into filming and things like that? Yeah, uh, for filming, uh, usually uh, I came in from the college side. Um, uh, my father was a printer and I said, I'm never going to go printing because I know how much work it is and stuff like that. So, <laughs> and I'm right back in the industry somehow, right? But uh, yeah, after high school, I went to college for media production and studied that. And after that, pretty much fell in for that and been working in around 10 years, like independently and two years now for mainly for you guys as well so mm -hmm. and uh i mean when you went to school that was when you met Jan, right 
Exactly. That's when we met Jan, and Jan was the first one who was working with you. And when you expanded, I was super happy to join as well because I loved what you were doing. And here we are. I mean, you say you. I mean, basically, most of the things that we're talking about today is based on you, isn't it? I mean, you and Jan and and the filmers are, are the ones that make uh, Inky stand out a little bit from from the others that are doing film, filming in the industry, right? <laughs> well, I'm. I think yeah, that is our differentiator for everybody else. I think the production value and uh, timeliness and uh, the way that we're doing it because we're in and out quickly. We're not trying to disturb the production, and we are trying to make people as comfortable as car like that's your job that you're doing to make a nice conversation without making people nervous because people aren't actors so it's hard to stand in front of the camera and uh, you make them feel welcome and i think that is the plus that we have hmm. fantastic but uh, for the next uh, 10 minutes uh, the stage is yours so uh, take it away so yeah you wanted to tell me what to do and how to use like uh, your camera and how to use video and stuff like that a little bit more of a technical side to see but let's be to start off with you don't need this you don't need a hefty camera you don't need this this is a plus this is a production value added production that if you want to do it if you want to do it alone it takes a lot of work but you can do it but this this is enough a lot of our shots that we do that morton has their social media stuff and everything is shot on an iphone and to be honest, it looks great for what it is. So if you know the media, if you're looking for shooting for social media, you should know the media. If you look shooting for YouTube, you should know the 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 formats, you should know why you're shooting. If you're shooting Instagram, you should know why you're shooting for Instagram. So that's where we are first. Know the technicals. You have 16 by 9, you have one by one for Instagram, you have a 916, you're gonna go for TikTok and something like that. So know your media and why you are shooting. Like I said, phones are perfectly capable of doing everything that you need to do. Just go out of automatic, go set to manual and adjust what you need to adjust. So adjust your white balance, adjust your brightness so it is constant. Um, so that is one thing that you need to do. Get out of manual as, mu as fast as you, uh, automatic as fast as you possible can. Uh, choose your location where you are shooting, look that it's good lighting. You don't need to invest in hundreds of dollars or euros in lights, you don't need that. Just go to your printing site or your conference room when you know the lighting is great and shoot stuff there. It, it doesn't take much, it takes like a little bit of three, four overhead lights that it's not directly on you so it doesn't get shadows and stuff like that. Just look at the location before you shoot and make the right decisions while you are shooting. Like I said before, and not everybody is a actor. Nobody remembers everything. Nobody talks perfectly all the time. So if you can, do multiple takes. Get a phone, get it on a tripod if you're a solo shooter, or get a friend to do it on a gimbal if you want to have it a little bit moving uh, or a little more dynamic. But make, make not one shot, segment it if you can. Insert B-roll, do nice uh roles of uh, like uh if you're talking about a machine do go before that when it's running do a little bit of a nice shots when it's running try to be stable that is very because nobody wants to look at footage like this right so take it down go on a try uh, go on a gimbal lock it down and do uh like i said nobody is born to be an actor, you have to work in it, and we, we all have other jobs, and we're not in front of the camera all the time. So do a truck track, uh, talk track. If, even if you are messing up, go into an editing system that you have on your phone. You can do this on, on your phone. So Adobe Rush, uh, Cut Pro, uh, uh, and a lot of like even the, the clips in your iPhone or Android equivalent is enough. Just cut out your mistakes and just roll over the footage. Enhance what you're talking about with what you, are sh you have shot before. So that is one of the main things that you need to, to know and think about when you are doing this. You need to, uh, if, you are, if you're doing B2B, if you're doing uh, B2C, 
identify your audience and find a way a story that you're trying to tell not just don't present like okay this is an iphone it does this this this. okay you have a print you printed it like this you have uh, nice um, let's say creases on it you have embossing you have labeling you have nice uh, nicely uh, stitching in the back talk about it why do you have it why what does it make you feel what is the extra benefit that somebody is that is looking to buying your machine or buying your product why do they have that um like i said define your objective why do you want to sell but that is something that morton is going to go in more into and how you want to drive the story that you are selling um be consistent i would say uh consistency is something that we are striving for so we have the same intro the same lower thirds the same outros whatever i know for us it's kind of kind of hard because you never know what you're gonna get when you come to a printing company some has tanks and lights some has a little bit more bluish lights and stuff like that so it, it's it, we have a little bit more of a hard work adjusting to to have a nice seemingly flow to everything looks visually the same but you're gonna have it easily choose one location stay there right if you have uh, let's say a machine stay by the machine don't move around too much be consistent with what you are saying uh, fantastic uh, chica i was just uh, because i mean uh, I, when we talk about the things we have the same uh, issue as when we talk to uh, printers that sometimes we talk uh, a language that not everybody understands Absolutely. so just to, to just to be 100 percent sure when you talk about white balance what what is white balance for example um, white balance is something that you said. So you, when you're at the scene, you have a white piece of paper that should be white, right? If you're not color grading it, if you're not making a, like a creative adjustment to it, it should be white. So you have to define what white is, and that should be white. And you can do that even on a phone. So basically, absolutely. You can put if you go out, yeah. yeah. If you go out of manual, a lot of apps are, are now, now letting you set up the temperature, the white balance, or what it's going to go. It's going to go to two thousand eight hundred to like the, let's say nine thousand Kelvin. So you have to adjust what seems fine to you and what do you want to decide what is white. Mm. And then I think that most people understand the tripod is like a stand for the camera. But yeah. uh, what is, what is a gimbal? What is a gimbal? Well. Um, when you, if I, I, I probably you saw me and Morton running around with like a giant, uh, this camera on a giant thing that is running around, it just stabilizes your footage. So you don't have this like micro jitters and stuff like that. Even though it seems like I'm holding the camera steady, it still has a little micro jitters. And that is a machine that you put your camera on that eliminates that and makes it really, really smooth. Mm. Um, and then uh, the last thing that I would like to, to ask you before we're going to talk to Ed, um, when you when you say the OLA, so the B roll, B roll is is I mean you have A roll, which is the story, and then you have B roll, which is covering the story, right? So yes. the B roll is typically, let's say that you talk about a, a piece of equipment. Let's say that you talk about a, here you see a binding equipment. Then you will typically have filmed the binding equipment before or after, and then when you cut it, you basically put that on top of the of the video in order to make it smooth because you can almost not hear the sound that is clipped but if you see the video you can easily see it right absolutely like i said that is the visuals that you shoot after it to enhance the story to show what you are telling to get a little extra that the audience understands even if you're talking let's say uh, a saddle stitcher not a lot of mm -hmm. people know what a saddle stitcher is right show mm -hmm. it when you're talking about mm -hmm. it Mm. So it is also so one thing is to cover things, but it's also to make the story more engaging and more fun to watch. Basically, right? absolutely. Uh, mm. For me, is I'll say a general thumb of rule is like twenty seconds somebody talking, then two three cuts of B roll. So mm. it makes it dynamic. It makes it not so jarring to watch. For me talking, I know webinars are like that, but now that you're joining, it's a little easier to watch because you're jumping a little bit left and right. It's not always just me, right? So just a little bit, this back and forth, and you can do this visual with B-roll over your A-roll, you're talking, that creates that dynamics. Mm. Fantastic. Um, I know this was a short chick. I probably you could have been talking about for in details and long run. <laughs> I course. think that maybe if there's an interest, and please write that in the chat if you think so, but I think it could be maybe great to have a session where we go in to actually show how you use the phone with the white balance. And, and maybe we could do that in the later stage because I think a lot of people would like to film, but are a little bit afraid of getting into all this expensive equipment. And then you have a production system in your hand, right? So uh, yeah, maybe uh, that, could, that maybe could be the next one, right? 
Absolutely. If people want to see it, I'll, I'll gladly explain it to make your uh, stories better and visually more appealing. Fantastic. Thank you, Chica. And uh, that was uh, great to hear from you. So uh, we will uh, catch up later. So yeah, yeah absolutely. It, um, I called you yesterday or uh, just a few days ago to ask if you wanted to to uh, connect and, and participate in this uh, little webinar, because yeah. uh, as I said in the introduction, I think that you're doing it very, very nicely. Um, why did you start doing video for your company like this? Uh, it's a pity that you cannot see me, but you can see the video. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I have a new computer, so I don't know why it doesn't work. It has to do okay. with computer, I think. Okay, okay. Uh, but uh, we, we have a photo of you on the screen, so you can just talk. <laughs> yeah, great. So um, I like to make uh, videos of uh, how to print with uh, machines. And I discovered it this uh, years and years ago um that it was um say to explain how you print something it's really impossible by only text mm -hmm. and if you explain it one on one with your words it's almost impossible to understand for somebody where you're talking to so i discovered if you um show actually print and a machine and the the one who's telling it and in this case it's me that it's uh true what you tell so you use it to to kind of let's say that instead of of having a let's say a print of the popcorn box that you we spoke about from yesterday then then yeah. you basically uh, show how it's produced from the yeah. printed sheet to how it's cut yeah. how it's glued and and that yeah. gives you a, a a better talk track to your customers so do you do you send it out to customers as well or are you only using a linkedin and and uh, and youtube to to distribute it with or or who is uh, who is the, who's your audience for for it yeah so what i do is multiple things but the main channel is linkedin mm -hmm. And the other channel you might say is a website that I put on text in what I tell, I put in text. And the the audience are uh, uh, advertising bureaus, uh, clients who are looking for solutions, all kinds of yeah, people who are looking for solutions and they cannot find the, the right uh, manufacturer. Mm -hmm. They come to me and I'll uh, solve the problem. Yeah, F fantastic. So uh, when you, you said to me yesterday that it, you have done this for many years now, I think you said eight yeah. years. Yeah. Um, from when you started till now, what has it done for your presence on LinkedIn? I mean, have you got a lot of connections and a lot of uh, contacts through uh, through your work? Yeah, yeah the, the strange thing is that um, when I came to an exhibition like Drupa, say in 2000, then I had to introduce myself and now, not always, but sometimes when I'm walking at Drupa, then people uh, come to me and they say, hey, I know you, but I'm sure that I don't know them, <laughs> but they know me from the internet. Mm, that's amazing. And then has it also given you business or is it just for fun? <laughs> uh, it is for me, um, most of the time, say fun. Um, but it's it's very no, not super costly, but it costs uh, of course a little bit. Um, and for me, it's also a, a very good business model. But I do it for the, for the fun, Be, uh, like uh, manufacturers like Zoons mm -hmm. and like Skodix, They uh, uh, ask me to work together, and that I really like. <laughs> That's amazing. So basically, that is like, as I said, uh, I don't know if you heard that in the in the very beginning, but what I like about your way of doing things is that it is, uh, I think it's very great, I, even, if, even, even if it's in Dutch, I still do understand uh, most of it. But when I see it, it's like, it's it, of course, it's marketing for your company, but at the yeah. same time, it's also more like education kind of thing. So yeah, do you think correct. that, so do you think that this kind of educational approach is something that is, uh, giving you a higher credibility instead of uh, yeah. pushing something in the throat of the customers? Yeah, but I think uh, I, I really like to inform and explain how to make stuff. 
and what is the short of uh, say say collateral damage or something like that is that when I have to explain then I have to be sure what I explain is correct uh, that so, is good <laughs> yeah so not, not only I am educating others uh, I'm educating myself uh, really on a yeah on a, on a big scale because when I go to Zooms, they have three people for me who are the best in their business and they're telling me all the secrets and then I tell immediately all the secrets to the internet. So basically what you say is that, of course, you need to have a high level of credibility and that is by working right. closely with the vendors. But at the same right. time, that also gives you an opportunity to learn more about the equipment that you're using. Uh, the company you have, how big is it? Because I mean, when I, the reason I'm asking is because when I see you on, on, uh, on the internet, on LinkedIn, I see that you have so many different types of production that you can, you can do everything, can't you? Yeah, that's... This is the most important, uh, most interesting part of this uh, video mm -hmm. with you. So, uh, so just guess how many, how big the company is. <laughs> I have no idea because uh, I wanted to check uh, check up on you, but I didn't have time for it. But uh, when I look at it, it seems that you have uh, quite a lot of equipment that you can do a lot of different things. And if you, the video gives you, a, a, let's say, an impression of being bigger than you maybe are. Then it maybe yeah, also gives you big. Maybe it gives you more customers than you would normally get. Yeah, correct. So you're you're speaking with a, a small company with lots of contacts, with lots of partners. Mm -hmm. So the strength is actually of the company is that I've worked together with lots of companies, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's really a small uh, business in the Netherlands in the Amsterdam region, and that's that's how this working so well. I have. Uh, it's not my goal to be big um, and otherwise I have some really great great clients I think through these kind of works really mm. Yeah. Mm. fantastic um, I have shared your LinkedIn uh, address in the chat uh, most of them probably already connected with you or know you but uh, if not uh, then do please uh, reach out to Ed and see his films uh, I think they yes. are a, a, a brilliant example. And I'm sorry, I can see on the screen that I spelled your name wrong and I hate when I do things like that. Uh, I will uh, I will make oh. sure that I change that in the replay. I had two no L's problem. instead of two S's, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, oh, it doesn't Ed, uh, thank you very much for your time here on uh, this little webinar. I know it was with short notice, but I'm sure that people appreciate uh, your yeah. input. So uh, thank you very much for your time here. I have one remark, if possible. Sure, 100%. Um, I want to thank Ziga because what he told is 100% true. And that's, I really like that I was hearing myself. It's not, it's easy to do. You need, yeah, like an iPhone, you look, just look at a proper environment and just go. I mean, uh, I'm sure Chica appreciate it. And I'm also sure that our audience appreciate you saying that because that probably takes the pain out of uh, yeah. people that are having second thoughts about whether they should start with this one. So uh, uh, once again, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ed. And, uh, and uh, I hope to talk to you soon and maybe even visit your company. That could be fun. So uh, yes. thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. See that was um, that was uh, I think that was pretty good, wasn't it? Uh, I think that um, I just need to do like this. Then we should be able to continue here. So um, first, I hope you liked as well uh, the, what Chica was talking about because I think it is important to understand that the quality of the phones we have today is so amazingly fantastic that that it can be used for. Uh, production quality film. I can even tell you that uh, <laughs> if you go on Inkies and search for South Africa, the first uh, three films we did in South Africa were entirely done on uh, on uh, uh, on an iPhone um, 13. Uh, and the reason why it was so was because we uh, came in for a quite uh, let's say not so funny story because uh, uh, Jan lives in Sweden. 
uh, but is a Slovenian citizen. And uh, Swedes and Danes, they don't need visa to get into South Africa, but Slovenians do. So Jan had to go back to uh, to Sweden, and then I was on my own uh, with three jobs in South Africa, and I was just like, <laughs> uh, and um, the funny thing is that uh, I don't think that anybody really notice the big difference to be honest uh i'm pretty sure that if jan uh, had been on site it would be more details much better look but from a storytelling perspective i don't think you can see much difference in uh, what's going on and uh, very soon there will be another english film where i filmed it with um, uh, also with the iphone in uh, in somewhere in the us uh, and that was also made uh, on these kind of let's say iphone kind of times because uh, basically the uh sometimes there's not a budget for going uh, too many people so it is something that you can use well uh, now it's my turn um first of all i think that people understand this all films need to serve a purpose if you don't have something to say if you don't have anything to to tell if you don't want to achieve anything don't waste people's time. I mean, it's okay to do things if it's just for fun, but then put them on TikTok or or uh, Facebook or other things. But if you if we talk about it from a business perspective, tell stories if you have something to tell. If you don't have anything to tell, it can diminish the value of your brand if you're just polluting uh, the streams with too many information about things that is not relevant. Uh, even though that we find that we are hopefully relevant to as many people as possible. It is a fact that sometimes people think that we have too much content that we're pushing through our channels. Uh, and it is always about, okay, who can we address this to? So it is relevant to people. I mean, is it relevant to talk about labels if you're a commercial printer? Is it is it relevant to talk about uh, corrugated if you are, are in, in uh, folding cotton? I mean, there's a lot of questions you always can ask about this. Um, and then you have to de de define for yourself what is it you want to achieve. And and I have given a few examples in the list here below, and I will just read them uh, because there is a difference to how these are made. First, do you want to teach and educate just like Ed did? Then it's quite simple. I wouldn't say simple because that sounds like it's easy. But if you teach and educate, then you have a story where you talk about a product, a service, uh, uh, something that you, you want to teach everybody. And the and the very purpose of that is actually to educate and teach. So you don't have to have like any call to actions. You don't need to have something else because this is something that you use as a uh, viewer to learn and understand a particular area of interest. Then you have sell, sell or commercials. I have put both because it's a little bit different. If you have, you could see that guy uh, on the photo right now, he's selling an ice cream. So I thought that was great because if you sell something, you basically need to be sure that people understand that you are trying to sell them something because then you will expect them to react on what they see. I'm going to talk talk about that in a second. Then I have put in storytelling. There's a lot of people today that are using storytelling as part of their branding and marketing. One of the things that are very is very important in uh, in in my view and our view is basically that storytelling is is close to teach and educate but it's in a bigger perspective so when we do um, the films we do from from inkish and i will show you in a second how we, we curate these stories uh, because you can take it and learn it and use it if you like but storytelling is something where you say you don't really care so much about how many people sees it right now you don't really care about how many clicks and views you have because it is more seen as a library. If you if you go into a library full of books, you don't really think about whether uh, uh, the book about a certain bacteria is read one time or 2,000 times. You care about if it's available at the time where you need to know about that bacteria, for example, right? So storytelling is, is a, about connecting emotions uh, and understanding of something into something that can be let's say, pulled when you need to understand what it is about. Uh, and I will get into that in a second even more. Then you can have announcements. It's like uh, announcements is like uh, if you're served something, for example, right? Okay, this is uh, a pizza. Then it's nice to know it's a pizza, right? Un unless you can't see it, of course. And announcements can also be like a company saying that, okay, we acquired this company yesterday, for example, uh, Road and DG announced that they acquired or actually formed formed a company together with uh, Aveca in um, in uh, Lith Lithuania. Uh, so that was an announcement. It typically looks like a press release, and if it's a video, it's typically like 
the CEOs talking directly to camera, talking about something that has just happened in the company. And then you have image films that has a specific purpose of driving confidence in that company that you are uh, watching the, the image films about. Uh, I am showing you one at the end, uh, which I don't think is so successful uh, in my view. And, and you will understand why I don't feel it's so uh, successful when you have seen the rest of the slides and listen to what I've been talking about here at this webinar. But it's just to give you an example that this is the kind of thing that we will go through. So um, I said that film should be engaging. And that is because everything we do is always something that is about establishing some kind of connection to the audience. If you cannot connect with the audience, even through a camera, then you can never have them to ex expect some call for action. And what is a call to action? And we always talk about call to action when we talk about uh, commercial activities. But call to action is also like um, in the in the in, in one of the slides I have in a the moment. There is like uh, save the planet, for example. I mean, the, the planet is not saved if we don't do anything. Uh, and the film doesn't change anything. When people are screaming about environmental things, it doesn't help anything. It's when we do something that happens. So when we when we have a film that has a purpose and, and, that, and that has an as um, let's say as a wrote before, uh, uh, it wants to achieve something. It also needs to give you guidance on what to do in order to achieve what you do, because the film itself doesn't do anything. Uh, so that is important that that you get that into your kind of understanding when you plan uh, to do the film, in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, so here's a little bit about how you, how we think you should prepare a story. And I'll tell you why. Um, my son, uh, Mass, has just been on, uh, on a school trip to uh, Greece. And, uh, and they decided to make a film about it. And everything is sequential. So when he shows the film and he has cut it, it is basically the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. And it is so long that a lot of people might not end up seeing the end of it. Uh, I think that some, some people think the same about some of the films we do, to be honest. So the way that we have tried to turn and understand uh, how you prepare a story is basically make sure that the, 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 the really important me uh, message is always considered first. It doesn't mean that it is always told first, but you have to think about what is it you want to achieve. So that's why I say start with the end. Start in your planning saying that, okay, this is about this. And then everything builds up towards it. And we have, in English, we have uh, created, uh, people often ask us if we have, when we do interviews, if we have uh, uh, the questions prepared in advance. And as Chica said, most of most of the people in the industry are, of course, not actors. So, so if you're not an actor, how should be how should you be able to to learn everything, to to uh, to remember everything that you are supposed to say? Uh, so, rather than having a focus on uh, questions, we focus on the process. So, here is um, uh, an example. We say that in the planning, you start with the result of the effort. In this case, when we go out and talk to people, we often say that, okay, you invested in this piece of equipment. Uh, what is the ROI? What is the outcome for your company in that investment? Because we need to have that as something that drives the story. But if I ask that question as a first question when I talk to people, they will be, they will be more nervous. They will be I don't know. I can't answer that. I because you need to make sure that people are in the comfort zone before you get them to that. And that also goes for a story, even though it's not an interview story. It, you need to build up something so people are open to your messaging. So the first thing we do is in the planning again. Second point two, you can see that on the screen is identification. Everybody you ask can always say who are you. So if I ask you who are you, you can always say my name is Bob and I live in uh, South Carolina and I uh, am the CEO of this company. Everybody can do that, and it 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 sim sounds so simple, but it actually takes a little bit out of the the pain of an interview because basically okay that was easy I can I can do that. And the next thing you can also, most people can say that is market and competition. So, okay, what market do you address? Well, I market, uh, I, I'm addressing this market and okay, who's your biggest competitor? Okay, this is this company. And then you, what is the challenge? Because nobody's investing in anything without, it needs to be solved, solve either a challenge or solve something that you need to get fixed. That goes for all of us. So when I talk about 
that it needs to serve a purpose for the film, we basically always have a story where we serve uh, some kind of pain stake that, that is needed to be taken care of. So in the environmental thing that I gave as an example before, if you want to save the planet, that is the challenge. And then is the solution that, okay, uh, we, we reduce our uh, carbon footprint or we reduce our energy consumption or uh, we drive less car or we switch car to electric cars or uh, all these kind of things. So it has some kind of uh, the challenge and some kind of solution to it. Uh, before we go to the to the realization of, for example, an investment, we start with the selection because often there are more uh, solutions to um, to a problem. So uh, instead of trying to focus on, uh, let's say, the vendor that has asked us to go and film a, a specific machine, we just say that they they don't have to mention names, but it could be like, okay, what are the uh, okay, we look for something that is a little bit faster than we have today. Uh, we have also a problem because the saddle stitcher is, uh, we have too many errors on it or uh, whatever it is. Basically, you identify the pain stakes and then look at the selection of solutions that can make your company into a better situation. And now you pick a supplier and you talk about that one and then you get back to the result of the effort. So you can see in the spiral, we have said that it's not opposite of the planning, but you can see it starts with identification. And number six in the, in the bull's eye is basically the result of the effort. Th that is the way that we build stories. And you should consider this for yourself. I think that one of the problems, and if you look at uh, some of the interviews uh, in the market, is often that they don't know where they start and they don't know where they want to end. And therefore, sometimes the films with all the best intentions can be so boring because when it's, the day is always just like, uh, I can't remember what they spoke about. I, I simply, I didn't get the message. I, I don't know why this is relevant to me. Um, and of course, this is uh, just my opinion. But uh, when I look back at Inkish, uh, when we started, we had no plans of what we did. Uh, we just started in use, which uh, often ended up having formats that were close to maybe 20 minutes of duration. And it's few people that have time for, for, for 20 minutes unless it's a webinar, unless it's a very important topic that they are interested in. So that is the reason why you have to figure out some kind of process that makes sense for you. See, here is the, the Save the Planet that I just spoke about before. Because uh, when we do the films and we do uh, the different types of film, uh, one thing is that we have a call to action, but we need to focus on some kind of reaction as well. Uh, I put in like pull marketing versus push marketing. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, we are working on uh, Inkish Max, which is a magazine. The reason why we do this is because films, you only see film if you search for it or you see it in a thread or something like that. Um, push marketing is, is the magazine because we, we put it in the mailbox, physical mailbox of all printing companies in California. And when they have got the magazine with the QR codes from the articles to the films, uh, it creates an omnichannel basically. It creates that, okay, sometimes you consume um, uh, electronically on the screen, sometimes you consume on paper, sometimes you maybe even consume on podcasts or in webinars or in, in exhibitions, a lot of different things. So when you do that and you think of the reaction, you have to think about what is important. Is it the clicks? Is it the views? Is it the number of leads you generate? Or is it your branding? Or is it your revenue? And I mean, the obvious, in my opinion, should be that it's the revenue you need to focus on. And you have to think about your own selling cycles in your company. Because let's say that you create a commercial, let's say that you go and have a uh, a big ass <laughs> advertising agency doing and let's say it cost you 100,000 euros. Uh, I'm not so sure that any of the, the uh, any uh, promotion films in the B2B segment creates an instant reaction. You may get 1000 likes, but if you sell zero machines, it still hasn't turned out to be valuable. So in your planning of using films in your communication marketing, you have to think about is this something where you have a, an expectation for an instant let's say, instant reaction from the people that views it? Or is it something that you built up as part of your thing? The two things that we we don't care about clicks, we don't care about views, we don't care much about leads. I understand that sometimes, of course, you need to justify investing in films. And this is one of the reasons why we believe that some of the films people should do themselves. Um, uh, but for the branding and for the revenue, branding, I would probably 
not very much use my own films and my own film crew because uh, it is branding is <laughs> remember branding and marketing is two different things marketing is what you do branding is how you're perceived and you cannot jeopardize with how you're perceived as a company if you spend uh, let's say millions of dollars or euros on developing technology you have maybe hundreds of employees in your company you cannot have an iphone production uh, uh, quotation iphone homemade production if you don't have a professional team doing it if you have professionals employed fine but if it's just like uh, you know uh, something that is not so professional i'm just saying that that can cost cost you a lot of money by doing it wrongly so the branding and the revenue that is in my opinion the two kind of reactions you should focus on and that is why the timing of when you do things and the time from when you do it to when you expect a reaction needs to be aligned with reality and you can just use yourself as an example you have never seen a film about a car a commercial about a car in in television and then you went out two hours late and bought it that has never happened i almost guarantee so just to have that aligned with so uh be sure that you talk to your audience uh be sure to identify gender age segment function um and be where your audience is don't mix b2b with b2c it is not the same if you sell a coca-cola or nike shoes the measures and and the and the effect of your brand and your products and your marketing is entirely different from when you sell a machine or capex investment uh, so therefore talk to your audience and and the reason why i say this is just because what i have seen and which actually motivated me for doing this uh, webinar was basically that some companies have are using i hope uh, i don't know actually uh, professional advertising agencies to help them communicating the brand values and and what they do and and in my opinion fail quite a lot because they have uh, mixed b2b with b2c uh, i will give you an example about that in a second um, and also if you look at this one uh, too many messages is simply too confusing uh, I photoshopped this one to say that, okay, if you have one sticker that is not gray, uh, you can probably easier identify that among the others. But if all of them were the same color, I'm pretty sure you would be as confused as I was when I saw it. And that goes for the same when you are doing films. If you, if you want to do films and you have limited resources, pick the topic that is most important to you and let the rest be instead of trying to get all the topics into one film because people cannot consume it and if you think of yourself you know that i'm right so <laughs> i'm not even trying to be uh, too much mr smart ass here but i'm just saying that that is something that uh, i experience also something that i would um, uh, that is tempting sometimes if you want to make things look better than it is uh, stock footage is cheap it is uh, there's a, a lot of it it is uh, easy to use but be careful you have to preserve your brand and your story uh, so when you use stock footage as part of your editing and part of your let's say identification thing like that you you simply need to uh, you need to have that uh, aligned with uh, uh, in ensure that you have the same color gradings that you have the same kind of emotion in the thing here and um, that leads me to something that that i would uh, like to uh, show you um, it is, to be honest, it is not, I mean, I have done it one time before and I, I don't want the message to be wrong. I think that Elanders is a fantastic company. Uh, I think they do a lot of right and good things. I just think that they, they miss the target here. And I want to show, even though it's in German, I think you uh, can learn a lot from seeing this film. And I'm of course curious, while you see it put in the chat, uh, what you think of it because it is a nicely produced film but it has in my opinion uh, mixed b2b b2c uh, it has a lot of messages it lasts three minutes and that is actually uh, what i would like you to see now just so we get into uh, something that is uh, in uh, let's say in um, oh that was the wrong one just hang on a second here so we see something that is uh, a real example. So I will just keep quiet for a second. Emotion. Momenta. 
Der Blick zurück? Oder der Blick nach vorn? Für eure Kunden stellen wir beeindruckende und personalisierte Produkte her. Erinnerungen, individualisierbar, ausgeführt im Digitaldruck. Flexibel und skalierbar. Weltweit verfügbar durch unkomplizierte API-Anbindung. Mit White-Label-Versandlösungen direkt zu eurem Endkunden. Wir drucken Emotionen. Wir bringen Leute zusammen. Wir halten unvergessliche Momente fest. Und wir ermöglichen es, Quality Time miteinander zu verbringen. Die Kunden kommen mit einer Problematik zu uns und wir finden die Lösung für sie maßgeschneidert. Wir machen Packaging erlebbar. Zum Anfassen. Vom Startup bis zum Großkunden. Für Lebensmittel zertifiziert, entworfen, um aufmerksamkeitsstark und greifbar zu sein. Wir als Elanders wollen unseren Kunden deren kompletten Supply Chain abnehmen und dort zu drucken, dort einzulagern, wo auch der Bedarf ist. Ausgerichtet auf eure Bedürfnisse, revolutionieren wir die Verlagsbranche. Mit selbstentwickelten Softwarelösungen aus einer Hand. Optimiert auf Just-in-Time-Prozesse. Ob Einzelstück oder zu Tausenden, aber immer in bester Qualität, leben wir Publishing. Druck ist für mich die Manifestation von Wissen. Und Bücher sind Wissen. Und wir bringen beides zusammen. Wir liefern Druckerzeugnisse für den höchsten Anspruch. Außergewöhnlich. Überraschend. Komplex. Für deine individuellen Anforderungen entwickeln wir Neuheiten in Gestaltung und Kreativität. Einzigartige Lösungen nach Kundenwunsch treiben uns an, Printerzeugnisse zu schaffen, wie es sie noch nie gab. Wir versuchen, die Kunden abzuholen, mit ihnen gemeinsam Produkte zu entwickeln, die dann später für sie auch Mehrwert generieren. Denn Print ist Emotion. Und wir leben unsere Leidenschaft. Für unbeschreibliche Produkte, für Lösungen und Qualität. Jeden Tag. Elanders Print and Packaging. From end to end and beyond. So, um, that, was, um, that was a film that was... Um, um, I don't know what stands back, uh, to be honest, uh, because as I said, I think it's a, I think it's in many ways a beautiful film. It has a, a great messaging because I mean all the the thing that uh, they talk about with the with the with the, the the emotions and and what you do. But I think the the issue here for me at least, uh, and and you should learn for yourself and think for yourself. But I just want to give you my input anyway, is that you have in one side you have uh, the B two B. Business things because I don't think that the, the the pregnant woman care very much about mass communication. To be honest, uh, I don't think that anybody in the let's say the the family kind of environment thing cares much about things. Of course, it's a result of that that it's possible. But who are you communicating to? Are you communicating to the end user? Are you communicating to to uh, to who basically? Right, and and that is the question. That is why I wanted to show you because. Whatever good film you make, if it doesn't really communicate loud and clear to the audience that you are intending to uh, talk to, then you may end up in a situation where it actually uh, 
confuses more than than it uh, actually supports uh, your your mission, right? Um, so with that said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, webinar. We have uh, eight minutes left for Q and A, um, and um, and uh, I can see that that uh, both uh, Chica and Ed is still online. So in case you have questions for them as well, I will just bring them in here. So uh, let's see if there's any questions here. Chica is joining me again. I don't know if Ed is here, but let's see if there's any questions here in the meanwhile. And uh, I don't know, uh, Chica, am I totally wrong when it came to the the judgment and evaluation of the of the Elanders film? Or what no, do you think? I think I think, like I said before, know your market, know who you're t uh, talking to, right? Mm -hmm. that, that is um, that is the main problem that a lot of people are addressing their, like you said, B2B, B2C, and everything in between, uh, almost social media should be thrown in there as well. So, I mean, know your audience, know for what platform you are shooting and cater to that. Mm. Is that uh, also something that, that when you talk to, uh, uh, I mean, in, in your past, when you work with a lot of different companies, is that something where you also, as a filmer, sometimes had to be kind of the editor and, and suggesting them how to go in what direction or? Absolutely, absolutely. That was, uh, I did a lot of like, let's say, um, consulting to when it comes to these things. So I was absolutely, that was more first thing. What do we want to achieve? where do you want to achieve it right mm -hmm. and that set out the 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 rules of what we are shooting and how we are shooting and why we are shooting it mm. so so um as, a, as again i want to be very clear that i'm very fond of uh, elan this is a company and and the people that i know from there uh and and it's I, mean, I, I don't know if it's unfair to show uh, a case, but people that are spending money on these kind of things is is great examples of both what you should learn from and what you should avoid from. And I think that it, it is this is just like a teaching case. And it's not because we want to point any fingers because I hope it hopefully works for them and, and, and serves the purpose. I just think it's important for people to understand that it is sometimes easier, again, to use another film as an example for so you can make up your decisions in your companies uh what you think is right and wrong in in how you communicate with with uh, your audience so um it doesn't seem that we have any questions here chica so um, maybe we should just call for today and say thank you for your time uh, i see that most of you stayed with us all the time so that is just wonderful uh everything will of course be made into a, a replay during the day so you can see it on English tv whenever you like and i hope uh, uh, we brought something to you that you can use and uh, at least some insight on how we work and how we see things from our perspective. And um, I'm not saying that we are right. I'm just saying that uh, this is uh, experience. And I'm just saying that if you, uh, if you like what we do, uh, keep watching. If you don't like what we do, please comment so we can learn. And, uh, and if you, uh, if you want to, let's say, uh, challenge us by also having other people's opinions on, these kind of things uh, always great to learn from but uh, uh, we have more made more than 2000 films here and next year we enter our 10th year's anniversary so uh, we have some experience and we also have done so many errors that you can't believe it so uh, <laughs> so i think with that said i just want to thank everybody for uh, uh, having uh, spent your uh, last hour with us here on Inkish and also a very big warm thank you to Ed from uh, from the from the Netherlands for joining us and uh, as I said his uh, LinkedIn profile is in the chat connect with him see what he's doing I'm pretty sure you can find inspiration and learn from that too so um, thank you again guys mm -hmm.